Right guys, those of you who followed me through Swan's Quest, you know that I said I was coming to Monk's Pit next. Here I am. Monk's Pit, the famous Monk's Pit. Good sized lake. Similar size to Swan I'd say, about 18 acres. This peg here is called the Plateau. This is the first peg we come to along the field side. I'm going to be doing most of my fishing from this field side. I'll give you a little walk up here. Just because on the motorway side there, it's just not very safe with my two dogs. So I'm going to camp up over here. I've got a long chuck on me, so I can cast more than halfway across if need be. Let me walk down here. No, this lake's been fishing tricky, so I've been told while I've been away. Uh, so I'm going to have to pull all the stops out to get some of these big gals out of here. Next peg. This peg's called the end of reeds. Obviously because the reeds run right the way from here to the plateau peg where we just was. see the size of the lake a bit better from this peg. It's all the way up right up there, that's a swamp. I'm looking directly at the swamp in that corner. Ah, where do you start on a lake like this, eh? Probably one of the most peggy lakes I've ever fished. It's all about spots and pegs. Oh, it's a bit of a nightmare to be honest. Especially as I like to fish my own spots and create my own spots. Which uh, I do intend to do by the way. I'm not going to jump on the bandwagon. Start fishing the known spots that everyone catches from. That's just full of other people's leads where they've just ejected over the years. Because it's such a weedy lake. You've got to drop that lead instant. It's really crucial. There's Mercy by the way. Say hello cow pig. Cow pig. That's her little name I call it, cow pig. You know that from Swan if you guys have followed. She looks like a half cow, half pig. So, uh, by the way, that's the peg I've just got here. I started in, it's called the Grassies. It's the worst peg on the lake, does no fish. No one fishes it, it's full of crap, full of weed, full of silt, detritus, everything. Basically, it's crap, don't ever fish it. That's why I'm in it. And it's going to make it my own. I'm going to rake the shit out of it. And I'm going to get some big gals out of there. Right, moving on. This is the most famous peg on the lake. Without a doubt. If, if, you, meant, if you hear someone mention Monk's Pit, you know, as famous as it is, it's been around for years, it's been chucking out 30s and 40s for as long as I can... Uh, probably since I was born, to be honest. Uh, and here we are, look. Double point. Most talked about peg on the whole lake. Does more fish than any other peg on the lake. At the right time of year. It does probably the biggest... The biggest stamp of fish, I'd probably say. The biggest stamp comes from here. Down there where I showed you up near the plateau and and the chat room. Up there you can just about make make note of the boat down there. I think you generally get a few of the smaller fish up there. Uh, so yeah, here we are. Double point. I'll step back a bit so you guys can have a proper look. Call it double point because look how luxurious it is. Look how wide the peg is. Boat. Most pegs have boats here because you just got to get straight out on it. No time to piss about, life jacket on and get out to the fish. When they lock up here, they don't lock back out. And you've got to get above them in that boat fast. Uh, nine times out of ten, if you do it right and don't put too much tension on, you can land the fish. 
Uh, I do see certain people, I've seen them earlier on in the year trying to tug the faces off from the bank and it's just a definite no-no. Bad fish welfare, bad angling in my eyes. There we go, double point. I'm moving along to the second most popular peg, probably the most popular winter peg. What's this peg called again? I think. Rotary, rotary or something like that. Basically it's more along the lines where one was in, one was out for a long time. The rotator or some some something like that. I ain't been a, I've only joined this year, I've only done about six, seven sessions on him myself. So I'm still getting to know him. Not quite as luxurious as the double point. Look, every peg it does have its mats, which is pretty sweet in the winter. You have to get all muddy in that. Look, this is all turf, astro turf. This is the deeper end now, we're just headed right up the deeper end now. I'd probably say this is about 18 to 22 foot in front of this peg going across that way. About 22 out there. Where we was just out there, where you'd be fishing if you was in double point, I think it's about 14. 14 to 16. So it slowly tilts right down, right until you're into about 24 foot down the end there in places. So that's Monk's Pit. I'm here. I'm excited. I've got a lot of work to do. I've got to figure this place back out. Uh, but hopefully, once I crack this little nut, it shouldn't be a problem and we should get some of the big gals on the bank. Well, hopefully anyway. But for now, I'm going to get back and sort my stuff out. Sort my rods out and that. And uh, I shall keep you updated through part one. And uh, I'm going to keep keep recording right the way through. I should be here for about eight eight weeks or so. I'll just try and pinch a few of them big gals and see what happens. But for now, I'll speak to you soon. Hi people, I'm back again. I'm on Monk's Pit this time. Those who have followed on Swan and watched the previous episodes on the Bluebell Complex, you will know that I mentioned I was going to come and have a go at down monks to try this new bait I've got, this new prototype boilie. I've got another nine months left to test it, about eight and a half to nine months left to test it. So uh, I'm on monks obviously, it, those who know who are in the carp world, it's, it's a little bit easier than swan, obviously swan you, you can't, sometimes you don't expect to get a bite really because it's just one of them lakes, but here uh, the stock's quite a, bit, quite a bit higher, probably maybe double, maybe three times the stock in the same size water, so uh, I'm feeling optimistic. I've just uh, trickled a bit of bait in, I put about 20 25 spawns over three rods. I've got the three rods out first time, boom, 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 as usual, you know me. Uh, I've got them clipped up on the distance sticks because I got here last week, brought it down for a quick overnight last week uh, just to stick a bit of bait in and uh, give them a little taster, as you will, tickle their little taste buds. So uh, obviously I led it about and had a little find last week and found a few spots. So uh, well, I actually found one spot. It's really weedy. For those who know, who have fished uh, months previous. It's full of that crap weed, that kelp. It's about the worst weed that exists on the planet. Uh, it just locks you up solid. It's all the boat. It's all boat job here. Pretty much you've got to get straight in the boat and go out after them. So uh, it should be pretty hectic. And hopefully along the way I'm gonna treat you guys to one or two of the big gals, fingers crossed, you know, I'll try my best, as usual. Uh, things are looking good, I've already seen two fish show on the spot, so it's, things are looking promising. It's about half eight at night now, had the rods in about just over an hour, I'd say, I've been spotting out for a half hour. So I thought I'd give it a little rest before the, before the light completely faded away, and uh, just give you guys a quick update before I start spotting out a bit more and uh, I'm going to get a little bit more bait in shortly and I don't want to leave it too late uh, because the fish are really starting to feed now the sun's just set down below the trees on the left so uh, things are looking promising but uh, those just keep following guys what can I say I'm here keep following I'll try and make it as exciting as possible. I'll try and get some underwater footage this time round. I'll try and get some uh, 
some footage on the GoPro, get some live takes, uh, step the game up a little bit, and show you what this bait's all about. And uh, we'll see, we'll see just how good this bait is now, won't we? Obviously, uh, those who followed on Swan, you've seen what I've done on Swan, and uh, quite a few fish out, some absolute stunners, spawned out at low weights, but equally stunning. Obviously, I had the big common, which uh, got the perfect common, which I'm absolutely made up about. Uh, it's a fish I've always wanted. It's a bit of a dream fish, to be fair. Don't come out very often, maybe once, a, once a year, twice a year at best. So uh, I'm here on monks now, trying my luck in it here over the next eight weeks. So we shall see what's going on. But, uh, I'll keep you updated the whole way through, as I did on Swan. I've got an extra couple of weeks on here. I've got eight weeks on here. Really, really be nice to tap into one of the real big gals, one of a few of them upper 30s and low 40s that are in here. I know they're heavily spawned out at the minute, but uh, we don't mind that. We don't mind a few torpedoes in the sling, do we? Mate? Uh, we'll catch them when they're fat pigs a bit later on in the year. But for now, I'm going to trickle a bit more bait in before I lose the line, and uh, I'll speak to you guys soon. Hopefully, if I get one in the night. Have a little word and maybe get a bit of footage. Depends what time of night it is and how dark it is and what moon. What the moon's saying. It's uh, well, quite a big moon coming forward tonight, so I might be able to get some good night shots as well if, if it's quite early on. But for now, guys, I'll uh, speak to you in the morning or maybe hopefully later on tonight. Right, it's half nine on the first morning and uh, just had a savage take well, about an hour ago now been out in the boat for about 40 minutes. Uh, got a good fish, looks good anyway. Uh, definitely a good looking one. Uh, I was in the boat for a long while, weed me up heavily about 50 yards out. There's a big bay, a big band of uh, Canadian weed out there and that just locked me up and it's full of kelp as well so it's just a nightmare. But uh, persistence pays up, persistence paid off. So I didn't put too much pressure on it, I just held and waited around. I eventually got it up in a massive ball of weed. Uh, twice the size of the net, so I had to break the weed down before I could even net it. Uh, I knew it was a good fish, hence why I was patient to wait. That's a nice big black mirror, guys. So I'm going to get her out now and uh, give her away and see what she goes. Yeah, she's a nice weight. She definitely don't feel bad. Let's have a look, find out. See if she's over the magical 30 mark, eh? Okay? Oh, yeah, straight past the 30 mark. 33. <laughs> Looks like 33 on the dot. There we go again. Ah. Yep, 33. I'll take 33 on that baby. What a result guys, what a result. Pretty much my first session back uh, since I've been at Swan and Bluebell and that. Got seven more weeks left on here trying out this new bait. And I, I keep saying to my mates this bait's picking out the big girls. And, uh, there's the proof. Oh, what a lovely looking fish. It's, it's so dark and yellow. It's a bit of a magical fish, this one, actually. Looks very nice. Wow, look at the colours on that. You'll sort of shortly see, guys. Oh, what a fish. What an epic battle. An hour-long fight on the boat. It's pretty amazing. Stunner spawned out as well. Who knows how big she would have been? Who knows, eh? Heavily spawned out. I'm gonna get her up, give you a swell if she'll let me. Oh, wow, what a fish! What a creature! Come on, baby. Pretty much in 
immaculate condition as far as some of these monks pit fish go some are in good condition but that's the kelp it comes she's quite heavy and there she is <laughs> yes oh amazing look how black she is incredible fish look Girth on her, she's thick, she's got decent length to her, too. What a nice fish! I don't know if you guys can see the colours here. <laughs> Go up, down, darling. Come on, come on, get a bit more water on her. Let me twist that camera slightly. Monk's Pit 30. Stunning, eh? Perfectly proportioned. Real old fish. I'm made up, really am made up. <laughs> what a creature. <sighs> Stunning. Right, I'll get a couple of steel shots, guys, and I'll speak to you in a bit. Look at that out there, look how beautiful that looks this morning. About quarter to eight now, it's on my last morning. Set to be a scorcher today, 26 or so, maybe a little bit warmer. Look how nice that looks for a bite. My rods are set about just on the edge of that ripple, just into the ripple out there. And the fish generally haven't been reaching me until about half eight, nine o'clock time. I sort of move across from there and up here uh, for about nine, half nine. So, uh, yeah, expecting a bite within the next hour and a half. I must say, uh, it looks good. The rods are still out from yesterday, two of them. It looks spot on. I actually had a, a low 20, uh, just over 21 pounds on the left hand rod last night, about one in the morning. Uh, I didn't bother with pictures or anything, I just slipped her straight back. I was absolutely knackered, so uh, she got slipped back. But look, looked a nice fish though, good condition, that's the main thing. And uh, it was a bite, you know, that's what we're here for, bites. Surprised nothing else has happened, but that's carp fishing. It'd be too easy if you caught constantly. Uh, not forgetting I had that beautiful 33 pound mirror yesterday. So I'm made up about that. So I don't really mind what else happens, but I'm definitely going to stick around for the next couple of hours at least. Uh, as that oxygen level gets, gets up now, fish will tend to start to get their heads down and start having a good grub about. The sun actually helps this place in the morning from, from what I've learned while being here. And when that sun comes up, that water gets oxygenated a lot faster than it does when it's overcast in the mornings. Which then prevents, uh, it would prevent the fish from feeding if it's cloudy and stuff. As, as hard anyway. So I'd say when the sun comes up, they feed for shorter spells, but harder. That's my, that's my take on things, anyway. Seen a few shows early this morning, about six o'clock, over the double spot. You can actually see a little slick coming up now off the double spot. You can't, you can't see it, you guys at home. It was good to be down here. Feeling good about next week. Uh, I've only just started coming and getting the bait in now. So we're only just starting to taste it at the minute. I want them scoffing it, not tasting it. So I'm going to keep the bait raining through now. 
this, this new boiler, I'm going to keep it going in and at, at least a couple of kilo a week. I'm putting out 12 millers at the minute, so it, that equals a lot of bait, a lot of boilies anyway. So, uh, yeah, things are looking good. I've had that 33, so I don't mind. I'm quite happy to take a little bit less action and pick the big girls up. Well, I am fishing a peg that's, that doesn't really get fished at all. It's the weediest peg on the lake, or one of the weediest pegs. And uh, the carp are not really used to feeding here yet. So it's down to me to to get them into routine of getting their heads down here. I think uh, generally I'm going to pick the bigger gals off in this peg, hence why I'm here. I do have another four, no, another 13 pegs to choose from, and I've chose this peg. And it paid off to great success with that 33. I've had a low 20 now. Fingers crossed, uh, something might happen this morning. Who knows? I dropped a bit more bait in yesterday after having that 33. Put in about another 17 or 18 spums. Sort of lost count, about the 16 mark. It was 17 or 18, I'd say. some people don't like to count their spawns or they do it by the bucket uh, generally if I'm just arriving at the lake I do it by the bucket and then when I'm topping up I count the spawns like one two three four I like to know what goes in over every rod and what what's working either more or less on the top up whatever one works you can adapt to that and switch switch to whatever works Also, last night I found uh, the bite I had come on the only white bait I've got out there. I had a few white wafters and pop-ups rolled of this bait, but in white. And uh, that seemed to do the trick, so I'll definitely be coming back with a different approach next week. I'm still tinkering around and still figuring out what works. Well, obviously I haven't been here for a long time, eight weeks or so. Uh, and I've only done like six sessions before that, so I don't know the place as good as as good as good some, but I'm a fast learner and that's, that's what goes with me on these waters. It doesn't take me long to crack the code on these lakes with these big fish in. Uh, I'm excited about the next eight weeks on here and I'm also excited about where I'm going next. So who knows, uh, Strawberry Fields is definitely on the cards. There's one or two other lakes I've been looking at. Anywhere with big, big chunky 40s in will suit me down nicely. But for now, we're on Monks. And we're coming up the end of part, part one. We still have got a crucial two or three hours left, which I call the bite time on here for this peg, what I've worked out. So hopefully in the next hour or two, I'll manage to give you an update with a fish in the sling. But I'll leave you with that for now guys, and if I don't speak to you again, I shall see you next week for part two, where I'll really start to get stuck in now. I had a little lead about, I found a few extra spots this time, this week in various other pegs. So uh, I'm ready to crack on and get stuck in now and see if I can get a few of these big buttes on the bank.